Welcome to The Girl Podcast. I'm Pastor Mike with New Hope Network. We're here to help you take your next step in your relationship with Jesus. I'm so glad you're with us today. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to The Grow Podcast, episode 72. My name is David. I'm really glad that you joined us today. With me, as always, all the way over there is Pastor Mike. And a nice buffer that we have this week between the two of us. I think we probably need that. Yeah, more we probably often. should have a buffer more often. Yeah. <laughs> so Pastor Kylie has joined us to be our buffer today. Yeah. So welcome, Pastor Kylie. Thank You've been you. here once before. You hosted I think once. when I was. Yeah. She's one of our uh, substitute dis- I disappeared podcast once. hosts. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think just yeah. once. You did just it. Once. You've done it yeah. once, and Hattie did it once. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we might have gotten the best feedback times. ever yeah. when they <laughs> that's, when they so next week host Kylie will just slide to the right a little bit and I'll be we'll over put, here. You know what we should do is just bring Kylie and Hattie in here and you and I disappear. It it may could be do it, could do it that, one that time. would be fun actually. Oh, listen to this. <laughs> Kylie and Hattie, like, this is a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Anything with Hattie, you know? That's fair. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. Fair. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh we we're in our series Promised Land right yep. now and Pastor Kylie again if you if you ever miss the weekend teaching, make sure that you go check it out. Um, but this weekend, Pastor Kylie taught on the book of Ruth, which was really fun. Mm-hmm. So you're going to mm-hmm. hang out and do the podcast with us. Today. How did Pastor Mike trick you into it? Did he yeah. promise like money or chocolate? I was like, or? David and I are too tired. Would you just talk the whole time? Yeah, that'd and be we'll, great. We'll just oh, sit back and listen and take I notes. Think, I think everybody would love to watch me take a nap while Pastor Kylie <laughs> talks more about Ruth. I think that would be, <laughs> might be fun. I think that would be There's excellent. some fun stuff with Ruth, but yeah. you're a history buff and there's a lot of history yeah. stuff with Ruth. There is so, a lot of history stuff. Yeah. With yeah, yeah. So you wouldn't want to miss that. You spent a lot of time on the lower story. I did. For those, again, I, did. I feel like pretty much everybody has been mm-hmm. joining us regularly uh, if you're with us on the weekend. So you understand mm-hmm. that the Pastor Mike and now Pastor Kylie is doing the upper story, lower story, my story style of teaching where mm-hmm. you're just kind of hitting those different points. But lower story is always my favorite. Same. Yeah. Because you just start talking about history stuff. And yeah, you and had a stories. lot. And stories. Well, yeah. But that's gone. Okay. Yeah. Here's why. Sorry, Pastor Mike. That's, but I have to go okay. on a rant about history yeah. class right now. Because <laughs> <clears throat> if you ask anybody who disliked history mm-hmm. in, in high school or college or middle school, mm-hmm. whatever, <clears throat> they will almost always say, A, I didn't like my teacher. And B, mm-hmm. like it's, it's just memorizing names and dates. Yes. And like, that's because you had a bad history teacher Absolutely. who didn't understand that history is stories. Yes. And yes, part of those stories are when things happened and who was involved in those things. But that's just a part of those stories. It doesn't matter if you remember the date and the name, if you don't know what happened, why it happened, how did that affect things. The date is irrelevant (sighs) without the context. But history was one of my favorite subjects. And and we could tell that. I mean, she probably went the deepest into lore story stuff of any of the teachings in the, the greatest story, story begs of it, though, with <coughs> yeah, so. yeah, it really Ruth does. Definitely does lend itself to yeah. spending a lot of time there. I was know? glad to have yeah. her do it, but I, honestly, I was a little hesitant to ask her to do it because it's one of my favorite books of the Bible. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it's it's a good story, and although she did compare it, if you were with us, compared it to a rom com, which. Romantic comedy. Yeah, I, that know. that part went she what, right. Me. She's like, I'm gonna spoil all the. I'm like, you go ahead and spoil yeah. all, <laughs> all the she lost me. <laughs> What was the? What's the British one? You uh, oh, Pride and Prejudice. You, no, no. Uh, uh, down to oh, down to Yeah, Abby. I'm like, you go ahead and tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be just fine with me if I if yeah. I know what happened in Downton Abbey. Yeah. <laughs> now there but, are some. Yeah, uh, there's some rom coms that yeah, work yeah. for Downton Abbey's full of story though. There's lots of lots yeah. of stories that I'm not interested in. Right? But on <laughs> top of it, this being, I don't know how much comedy there is in in the book of Ruth, but it, it, right. there is some romance sure. in there. It's from my perspective because I'm a, more of a theology nerd. Ruth is a work of theological art. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. is, and there's a lot of stuff in there. One of the fascinating things about it is God is rarely mentioned in the book of Ruth, but he's it's almost like he's the narrator of mm-hmm. the whole thing. Um, you know, behind the scenes and the whole story. So there's this upper story kind of thread. You see God at work without, you know, without pulling back the curtain on mm-hmm. some things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's can also, I, go I, ahead. Can I interrupt? Yeah. Because one of the things I wanted to bring up later, you yeah. just jumped to. So we, oh, might, I did. As well, we okay. might as well just do it now. <clears throat> there's two books of the Bible mm-hmm. named after women. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. The and exact same thing. Ruth mm-hmm. very rarely mentions God, mm-hmm. and Esther doesn't mm-hmm. name it. Yeah. At name all. him at all. Yeah, not once. Why? And, why is? Why are the two books about women in the Bible either don't mention God at all or very, very 
you know, a very small amount considering I have no idea. Do you know why? I don't <clears throat> know why, although um, maybe it's just... It's obvious. You should yeah. just notice that God's at work I, back yeah. behind this. Do we really need to say that? <laughs> I, I don't know the why, and I don't know that we will know the why until sure. until Jesus explains it to us. But there, there's power in it hmm. as you go into you know where you realize God is at work, and Ruth is you know Ruth is a lot of fun. Esther is fascinating. We'll get to that actually oh, in, in 2023. Esther. Esther um, could and people have tried to make it into a movie, but Esther would be a mat- for mature audiences only <laughs> yeah. kind of movie yeah. when you understand yes. what's really going on there. But we're that, getting that'll ahead be a podcast. Right. That'll be we're a podcast getting ahead of ourselves. Well, I was going to yeah. say on different levels, both both of those women were very marginalized, and yet were. Uh, seen as uh, they're seen as less than by society, yeah. but more than by God, and and held a huge role. God wasn't even shy about uh, the part that they played because both of these women were very marginalized in their society. And there's some similar literature things, and I know, I mean, you talk about mm-hmm. the romantic side of this book, but there's there's a literature. Mm-hmm part to this where it's not just like someone recorded a history that this mm-hmm. they turn this into a, a story and I know you love I that. I say the big fancy word it's a chiastic type of structure. Um, but you basically, say that real fast chiastic. Yes but I mean basically what <laughs> it means. Fast. Yeah what she it loves means, I do uh, what it means is there's symmetry to mm-hmm. it that it just kind of follows a pattern and um, at the beginning we find in chapter one You know, it just starts off tragic. Everybody dies. It's terrible. Um, And the end of that, after all of this tragedy, is we just see this amazing loyalty from Ruth. Mm -hmm. It's unexpected. That's almost the theme of the book. That is is kind of the theme of the book. I mean, the woman was just steadfastly loyal, and she had no uh, motivation to be that way. Um, And so then you have these middle two chapters, and then you get to the final chapter, and it kind of goes in that reverse. We see Boaz's loyalty. <clears throat> yeah. That he's willing to, I mean, the man that had the first rights to be kinsman redeemer is like, yeah, no, I'm out. That jeopardizes my dynasty. I, I That's too rich for my blood. Nope, tap out. Um, and Boaz 100% was following it through. I don't care what happens to my lineage. I don't mm-hmm. care what's in it for me. He shows that loyalty. And then his loyalty brings about the restoration of all the mm-hmm. death and the destruction and everything that happens in the first, which then kind of highlights that center part. Um, that Did we you say over- center or sinner? Center. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, there's something in the story I missed there? <laughs> no, those center chan- chapters where we really see at work yeah. um, what God's doing and who they are with Naomi and Ruth and Boaz, and, and you still don't have the happy ending. But with all three of those, you see that core of, of um, Naomi struggling through the pain. You see the core of, of Ruth. Um, and her loyalty and her, how she worked so hard and was committed even in the insignificant places. And then you see, again, that Boaz stepping up and really yeah. um, really doing what's not required. Mm-hmm. Can you tell him. she's dug into the story and really likes yeah, it? Yeah, have you ever yeah. read the book of Ruth? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. A few times. A few and times. I, you know, you almost see like that loyalty come through then as God's loyalty to them as yeah. they become yes. yeah. the line of yeah. David and you know mm-hmm. the, that becomes where, yeah. where the line that Jesus comes from. And it's just so that loyalty just carries over Absolutely. then too. And then... Um, Absolutely. We're not in threads anymore, but I think no. you opened with threads <laughs> because, you know, in the greatest story ever told, 31 weeks all the way through mm-hmm. the Bible, there's constant threads that are going all yeah. the way through. So <clears throat> you don't need to use the language that we use during threads if you don't sure. want to, Pastor Kylie. But are there any threads or things that you, I mean, right. uh, clearly uh, you're a fan of this book. So I'm sure there's things you didn't get to touch on on the weekend. Sure. Any of those that you want to di- have us dive into now? Well, when you talk about that thread, <clears throat> the very, very ending, because there's almost like a false ending to the book of Ruth and the very, very so ending like of it. It's like a M. Night Shyamalan movie. Right. There's a twist at the end. <laughs> <laughs> there is a twist at the end. <laughs> the upper story comes through in huge ways at the end. We miss it because genealogies, I mean, let's face it, typically when we read the Bible, you get to the genealogy and you're like, and I'm going to skip over till we get to the next part. But genealogies were a big thing yeah. in There's the Bible. There's a reason they're in the Bible. There's yeah. a reason they're in the Bible. And the point of this particular genealogy is like you'd hit on God's loyalty mm-hmm. to Ruth and to Boaz and to Naomi throughout the story. Um, so it ends with the genealogy because, again, Ruth was a Moabite. 
Moabites were the bad people. They were not the people who were supposed to be in the line of Jesus. These were not the people um, who would get the good things. These are not the people. And she showed her loyalty again. There's that theme. Mm -hmm. She showed her loyalty to God and said, Jehovah is my God. I am changing who I am. Even when other people are insisting on calling me the Moabitess, because that's, that's just what you do in this society. I, I give my allegiance. I give my loyalty um, to Jehovah, and and I have changed who I am, and God honored that. Mm-hmm. And not only was she a part of the lineage of Jesus, she was a major and fairly right. close part to the lineage of David as well, who was his, his great grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you find yourself thinking, did he get a lot of his traits from her? Mm-hmm. You know, well, of course, both both the parents that loyalty. That was one of the things with David, was he was so loyal. Um, mm-hmm. Which I'm yeah. spoilers for. The series coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's okay because there's don't a tell whole lot of coming next, Pastor Kylie. A whole right. lot of David yeah. that we don't have time right. to get into. But uh, you know, there's there's several threads here that you know from a history perspective that mm-hmm. I kind of you know geek out on. Um, but for us to get the context here is remember this story kind of takes place in the middle of the time of the judges. So mm-hmm. we, you know, last week we talked about the judges. This is kind of in the middle of this, and Moab where they moved because of the famine um, was not a real neighborly place. Yep. And we we find Moab, just to connect other threads, mentioned other places in the Bible. Um, way back in Numbers, um, the king of Moab hired Balaam, the prophet, to curse the Israelites. Mm-hmm. And there's that whole crazy story with the donkey talking, you know, all those kinds of things. But he wanted them cursed. He wanted them wiped out and wanted, you know, to turn God against them. Judges 3 talks about 18 years Israel being oppressed and taken over by Moab until God raised. And this is one of the names that I always get. I I call him Ehud. I'm not sure. I've never looked up the actual pronunciation of that. One of the judges. 2 Kings 3 describes a war between Israel and Moab in the 9th century. Um, David, so we're going to talk about David in the coming weeks entrusted his father and mother this is one of the good stories of moab to be protected by Mo- the king of moab while saul was hunting him, him down which you know? there was a family <clears throat> tie there at that point so who knows yeah. who yeah. knows what because <laughs> yeah. of ruth and, and yeah. all of that yeah um and then you, we fast forward to solomon who married person after person after person after person and then had mistress after mistress after mistress and concubine you know thousands whatever it is one of them or several of them were women from moab and um you looked up is the name of the god kamash chamash kimash kimash is that how it is kimash is the primary god of moab which i i I want you to talk in just a minute about how gods were kind of identified with with the geography but when you read of Solomon's demise, it's the women from Moab are the ones who lured him, lured him away. Mm-hmm. And so you get this thing, and you refer to this. Um, mm-hmm. What's so amazing is that Ruth, and there's this long-standing history of the Moab, Moabites being this horrible group of people and pagan and everything. She's included in the in the line of jesus and the great grandmother of david and it's just Mm -hmm. an example of god's impartiality he doesn't call perfect people he calls imperfect people and invites them to learn to trust him it's almost like we've been chasing that thread down in that series Mm -hmm. you know we've had before kylie jumps back into what you were just talking about we've had in the last three weeks now i guess because joshua was two weeks ago yeah but there's been two you know, outsiders, let's say, to the kingdom of Israel that have been brought in. That mm-hmm. thread of 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 you know other people, not just the kingdom of mm-hmm. Israel, being allowed, you know, welcomed mm-hmm. into the family of God or whatever. <clears throat> but they've both been women in the last two. You know, the, it's mm-hmm. not that they're only women, but often right. that's what we're seeing, and especially mm-hmm. recently. Is there any? Is it just is that happenstance? Is that just? I mean, because it could be. I don't. I genuinely don't know. Is there a reason that we've had you know back to back women? from not from the kingdom of Israel welcomed in as as examples of people being brought into the kingdom of Israel from the outside like we had in Joshua like we now have with Ruth well you know again you've got to step back and take an upper story perspective here Mm -hmm. you know God what's so amazing about God's power and how he weaves everything is remember he's at work he was at work in their life just he's like he's at work in our life so he's active and involved in real events but then he's also weaving everything together so and 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 turning these 
his work, these moments, into stories for us thousands of years later. So he's active in the moment and then weaving all this together. So as you look at what he's doing here in the overarching uh, kind of uh, story arc is, yes, he's calling out a specific group of people to be a blessing to the other people, to the people of the world, but he's saying everybody <laughs> is welcome. It's not just this group of people. Mm -hmm. And so I think the fact that there's two very quickly back to back in Scripture is saying this is not an anomaly. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the direction of redemption mm -hmm. for us. And, you know, when we fast forward, and we'll probably get into this maybe in the Christmas series, but definitely in the, in the series next spring, you know, with our first, and we referred to it, uh, we'll refer to it actually. Um, no, we referred to it last week or two weeks ago with, with Joshua, the genealogy of Jesus. There's three women mm -hmm. who are mentioned, <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. two of them outsiders, and another one should be an outsider because it was a messed up kind of incestual situation, and yet God redeemed it. I find it interesting, mm -hmm. too, with, you know, Ruth, Ruth had really, you know, from the world's perspective, nothing to offer yeah. to being added in, right? I mean, mm -hmm. she was just, mm -hmm. she, she wasn't hiding spies for them right. or, you know, probably had a lot of money if you're running the you yeah. know, big brothel in town. You probably yeah. were, you know, so you had money or you're hiding spies. So she's welcomed in and you could say, well, they just wanted to use her. For, but Ruth, there was nothing mm -hmm. from a world's perspective mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she had to offer to the kingdom of Israel, the mm -hmm. kingdom of God, mm -hmm. other than you know, what God saw and yeah. her faithfulness yeah. and her yeah. loyalty. So, And honestly, no reason or benefit for her. I mean, she ended up having a benefit from it. Mm -hmm. But you find, I mean, in with Tamar, she believed that, oh, or not Tamar, um, Rahab. She believed, okay, I really do think they're going to take over the city. I want to get, I want to align with the right side. She was a right. smart woman. I don't want to be <laughs> on the bad side of this when this goes down. Yep. Ruth, honestly, especially when she made that decision, going home with her father was the safe place because sure. she's protected. That would have been the norm. That would have been the <clears throat> yeah. norm. Yep. And she actually chose the vulnerable, mm -hmm. not safe choice um, in that. There was nothing Un in it for her. Unprotected, unprotected women, and in particular widows who are left to be you know, abandoned, were typically the beggars in the streets or mm -hmm. had to turn to... Um, basically the sex trade. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she had no idea mm -hmm. that, you know, where she would end up mm -hmm. with that. You touched on the whole idea of kinsman redeemer, mm -hmm. and that's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. But just take us through a little bit of that. Um, kinsman redeemer, <clears throat> it, for that time, and again, that's really unusual to our ears. It's not something that we really think about. Um, but as I brought out, that's someone who would basically, like they said, kinsman, somebody who's close to you, related by blood, um, who redeems, who you're, you're in this place where there are no male heirs, uh, your land is, is they, they would sell the land and it doesn't specifically say if Elimelech and Naomi did that, but I mean, we could probably kind of safely assume mm -hmm. that they had sold their land. Um, according to God's laws, if you sold your land as an Israelite, it was more of a lease because you were supposed to get that back a certain every certain number of years. Um, and so you would pay for that land according to how many years you would, you would get that. But that kinsman redeemer would pay the price for that. He would give mm -hmm. you your livelihood back um, and then protect. Marriage was considered a part mm -hmm. of that um, and then provide mm -hmm. for you. And, um, I mean, it really was a role that the uh, recipient of it got all of the benefits. The kinsman redeemer really didn't make out super well. I mean, that was something that was um, more for the benefit of the person who received that. Um, but then we see those clear parallels with Jesus yeah. as kinsman redeemer, which mm -hmm. we don't, that's a foreign <clears throat> concept to us, so we right. don't make those connections. But I would think that even in uh, when Jesus came to earth that's a normal part of your culture it would have been easy to make that connection that wow jesus paid the price um you know to be able to make some of those connections he provides and he protects and even in some of the um the ways in the new testament where it talks about the church as the bride of christ ties into that kinsman mm -hmm. redeemer that there's that aspect of i am now um officially legally 
covenantally responsible for you. Um, not responsible in the way that don't mess up and make me look mm-hmm. bad, but res- the way it's supposed to happen is I now um, view you as a imp- as import as important as my own well being and my own taking care of that myself. T- that takes us all the way back to that night when God came to Abraham. And mm-hmm. seal the promise with a covenant. We talked about that with a path of blood. Is I promise to help to basically redeem you, to help mm-hmm. you become who I'm promising for you to become. And I guarantee it with what? With my, my own blood. body, my own blood. Mm-hmm. So this is an example of here's a person on the outside being perched, not that she was purchased, but being redeemed mm-hmm. and brought into God's family and God includes her in his family as a message to all of us saying you're on the outside. Mm-hmm. I think one of the, the things that I love, there's so many things I love about this story, is um, when Ruth said to Naomi, her mother-in-law, your people shall be my people and your God my God. We kind of read that as we go, oh, okay, well, she's converting. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that just didn't happen Mm-mm. in the ancient world. And it still is very abnormal in other parts <clears throat> of the world. I mean, you and I have visited um, parts of the world, even in Eastern mm-hmm. Europe, that we would consider to be, you know, somewhat Western part of the world. And your family and your culture mm-hmm. determine your religion. Well, mm-hmm. and you don't even have to go to Europe. You, you look at yeah. like even just denominations. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. You know, if, if you grew up Catholic, you're Catholic. Even yeah. if you don't really identify with the religion of it, you know, how many people do you know that are just, mm-hmm. well, yeah, I'm, like I'm Catholic because my family's Catholic yeah. or I'm Lutheran because my family's Lutheran. Well, that's <clears> in <throat> Eastern Europe. I actually had a conversation with someone that was confusing to me. And I just realized the depth of, of with that. I was talking to her, and she said, well, I'm from a mixed-race marriage. And from my standpoint, in our, our U.S., I think of that um, very clearly as Asian, Caucasian. You know, you, mm-hmm. you have these very specific things when you think mixed race. And she clearly was as Caucasian as me, so I'm kind of confused. And then she clarified, and it had to do with people group, and religion, it had nothing to do with anything else, but it was such a strong um, identification, mm-hmm. such a strong cultural identity that it's viewed as an ethnic identity. Mm-hmm. And so we tend to forget that's kind of close to where this would have happened, mm-hmm. and that's still there from from yeah. that time. This is who I am, and I could, yeah, you just don't change that. And I think for us, uh, you know, and there's so many takeaways we could take take away from this, but for us. Um, if there's one takeaway, I would encourage us to take away from um, the podcast at least this week. You know, uh, is don't. Is, uh, I'm trying to th- think how best to say this. So often we can get caught in that. Like you said, I'm Lutheran because I grew up Lutheran. I'm Catholic because I grew up Catholic, or I'm I'm unchurched. I'm outside of the church because that's how I grew up. In fact, I, you know, I've had conversations with some people lately. I just had an email with someone saying. You know, I, I like this. Can I still be a Christian and like this? Because culture tends to define faith instead of understanding that God defines faith. And it doesn't matter your culture, your background, your geography, your ethnicity. Jesus came to die for all of us. And he is writing this story so that all of us can be included. But the choice is ours. And when you honor God first, Ruth, Naomi, Boaz, all these, honor, when you honor God first, he honors you. Now, we can be unfaithful. That doesn't mean he'll be unfaithful. But He, when we are faithful, he, the fullness of who he is gets poured into our life, and we get included in that. So I think one of the big maybe encouragers, encouragements for us coming out of Ruth is um, don't do not let your past or your family or your past choices or others determine whether you're going to follow Jesus or not. Jesus wants you to be part of his family. And that ultimately is the, the family that matters the most. What would you say to someone who might be, you know, not exactly what Ruth was going to, but maybe, maybe, you know, they're going through a difficult time in their life or they lost someone or whatever, mm-hmm. but they feel like they don't have a, a Naomi. Mm-hmm. They feel like they're Ruth without Naomi or mm-hmm. Ruth without Boaz. 
what would you say to a person? You know, because you can read it and it can be so encouraging, right? Yeah. Look at look at how God put these yeah. people in Ruth's life. But if I'm in that instance and I don't have my mm-hmm. na- Naomi, that can be a really isolating, lonely, and frustrating place. And so then you read it and you're like, well, that's great for Ruth, but it doesn't yeah. seem to help me. What would you say to that person? Mm. <clears throat> That's a good question because um, (laughs) my go-to with that, um, I know here on our Williston campus, we have a grief share group that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so for people who are going through stuff like that, um, even if they discount it and say, I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much and I shouldn't, um, there's something really powerful about, and it's awkward and it's hard and it's a risk, but about seeking places where you can find people who are that mm-hmm. for you yeah um beyond i mean i think i think it's important no matter where we are we're we're especially when you're in times of of grieving and times where you feel like maybe people don't understand your situation or where you are um it's important to know that god is working the upper story that like naomi this may feel really bitter right now Mm -hmm. and it feels like I'm forgotten and it feels like there's no hope and there's no future and there's no place to go from here that God is still working the upper story that I have no idea what he's weaving and what he's doing that I matter to him no matter where I am Mm -hmm. and what I am that I I'm I'm precious I'm important um, is really important but Again, putting yourself in the place for community yeah. is really Which important. Which we've had to do, right? Like, yeah, she we, did. We just talked about it, but the, the obvious choice was yeah. go home, go away. Yeah. And yeah. she had to put herself out there and take that risk of yes. it didn't just to happen find to community. her. Yeah. Yes. She had to pursue it. You know, so and that's why the church is the church, right? But a lot of times so I went to church and they didn't. Remember, Ruth had to she <clears throat> went back to the fields. Mm-hmm. Well, again and again, she stayed with Naomi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People are people. They aren't always going to get it right. Mm-hmm. But we need to continue to pursue what we need to pursue, yeah. and God will honor that. Yeah. 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 May yeah. take time. Yeah. And a risk. Yeah. 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 Um, well, that was awesome, guys. Thank you for that. Do you have any homework, any next steps for us? Either of you, I don't know, does Pastor Kylie have the, have, the homework have this steps? week? You, <clears throat> or did you bring the homework, Pastor Mike? Like I usual? think he might have bring the, bring I the think homework. I think he probably did. I just didn't know. All of a sudden, I was like, wait, <laughs> yeah. wait preached? I preached. Yeah, did. You bring homework? Well, I did leave him with a little bit of a homework. Find your next step. Yeah. Identify wh- yeah. which of those people right. you are and find your next step where you need to push in. But I think for us in, in this greatest story, as we talk about these books, if you haven't read it, the story right. that we read. Go back and read it. If you have read it, now that we've given you some more color and richness about it, go back and at least skim through it again and and just let the Holy Spirit speak to you because the Bible says that it is living and active, mm-hmm. which yeah. means every time we read it and approach and read these stories, there's going to be something new that will help you grow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, again, thank you both. Thanks to all of you for joining us. <clears throat> um, we're always just thankful that we get to have this this time with everybody who joins from the grow podcast we love our new hope family Uh, if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe a few weeks ago we had a special episode go up where pastor mike and i talked with my dad actually uh, who's a pastor in minnesota and so uh, those don't go up at our normal time and we made david cry you made me cry. It was very rude. Yeah. <clears throat> and you knew that it would. Like, yeah. You knew where that was going, to. It, it was calculated. And I, and I had a cold. So like, I uh-huh. listened to that episode. I'm like, I sound terrible. And then I start crying. I'm like, no, I really sound terrible. <laughs> no one wanted that. That was bad for everybody. But uh, make sure you do subscribe. Um, and then leave us a comment. Like the videos. All, all those things help people find us a little easier as well. Um, and we appreciate the right. feedback because we always want to know. Um, you know things that we could be doing better or 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 things that you're enjoying whatever that is um and make sure you share the grow podcast if you have someone that uh is in the new hope family with you that uh you don't think has has been listening and it's been encouraging for you it's been a good next step for you i just punched my microphone if you like when i hit the microphone while i'm talking go ahead and share the podcast with somebody and and send in your questions Yeah, that's Send in true. Your questions. So I know you're gathering questions, questions yep. and we I don't know if more. we can make it happen, but I Hopefully. would love to during the Christmas season okay. here for us to do a special Q and A kind of time before the end of the year. I don't know if we can. We've got to have enough questions okay. right. for that. That's, but yeah, I would that's love to see that. Your happen. official challenge from yep. Pastor Mike is to give me a whole bunch of questions, and remember, don't send them to him. 
because it's more fun if he doesn't know the questions before the Q&A. That's scary. We'll to, we're going to get Pastor Kylie to send it, submit a couple good questions yeah. for oh, our next Q&A. Personal she, questions. I bet, yeah, I bet she has some great <laughs> no. insight and info. See, on high that. school perm. Ooh. Stop. <laughs> All right. On that, Producer, thank you can so we go much for joining us. <laughs> no, we do need to wrap it up. Pastor yeah. Kylie, thank you so much for, for joining us. It was uh, it was really fun having you here and um, having you preach on Ruth over the weekend as well. Pastor Mike, as always, thanks for being here. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you.